Friends, understanding the thoughts of others involves mastering three essential methods, and these techniques are crucial to grasp. Acquiring proficiency in these methods empowers you to easily discern and comprehend anyone's thoughts. Allow me to share a story about Buddha that imparts valuable insights into the art of mind reading. In a quaint village a long time ago, two brothers resided. The elder brother, who was visually impaired, remained at home while the younger brother engaged in farming. The presence of numerous animals in the fields led to the destruction of the entire crop, causing distress to the younger brother. In response, he devised a solution. Contemplating the situation, he pondered, why not enlist the assistance of my blind elder brother to drive away these animals from the fields? Given his blindness, he can stay in the field and upon hearing the animals, shout loudly to scare them away. This way, our crops can be safeguarded. With this plan in mind, he constructed a small hut in his field and positioned his blind brother inside. He conveyed, Brother, if you hear any animal sounds, shout loudly and the animals will flee. This will protect our crops. The elder brother agreed to the proposal and thus began their routine of him sitting in the field, responding with loud shouts whenever he heard the animals, effectively deterring them. This practice continued for several days. One day, a deer dashed through their field, breaking the fence in its escape. Meanwhile, a pursuing king also arrived at the scene. The blind brother caught the king's attention and he inquired, did you see a deer here? The blind brother replied, your majesty, I am blind. How can I see a deer? But I can share this much. The creature that fled from my field is not worth your pursuit. You are wasting your time. The king was intrigued by the blind man's statement, pondering, how can a blind man assert that? How does he determine the worthiness of the deer I seek? Addressing the blind man, the king questioned, Are you deceiving me? On one hand, you claim blindness, and on the other, you assert that the escaped animal is not worth pursuing. The blind man responded, O oh, king, the creature you believe to be a deer is in fact a doe, and she is pregnant. To my knowledge, I have never heard of a king hunting a pregnant doe. Hence, I advise against pursuing her, as it is not worth your time. Perplexed, the king couldn't fathom how the blind man knew the doe's pregnancy. He wondered, how can a blind man possess such knowledge? How does he discern whether the deer I pursue is a pregnant doe? The blind man's confident assertion prompted the king to seek verification. He instructed his commander, saying, Commander, I want that creature captured to confirm if it is indeed a pregnant doe. The blind man is adamant, and I need assurance. Go and determine if she is pregnant. Following the king's command, the commander investigated further. Upon returning, he reported to the king, O oh king, the blind man is entirely correct. She is indeed a pregnant doe. Amazed, the king struggled to comprehend how the blind man had discerned the doe's pregnancy. Numerous questions filled the king's thoughts. Ultimately, the king decided to delve into the matter and address the blind man, saying, While I cannot ascertain whether you are genuinely blind or not, I have a single inquiry for you. Will you provide me with an accurate response to my question? The blind man assured, O oh king, feel free to ask anything and I will truthfully respond. The king continued, You claim blindness, yet you reveal details about the creature I pursued, labeling it a pregnant doe. Additionally, you seem knowledgeable about the comings and goings of animals in your fields. How did you come by this information? The blind man elucidated, O oh king, as you pursued the doe, the pace and the sound of its movements indicated it was a deer. 
My field's dam is relatively small and a regular deer could easily cross it. However, the dewey broke the dam, considering the risk to its offspring if it attempted to jump. Thus, I deduced its pregnancy. Impressed by the blind man's insights, the king recognized his exceptional abilities, despite his lack of sight. Capitalizing on this revelation, the king posed another question, stating, Your wisdom is evident and your understanding vast. Today I seek your insight on whether my wife remains faithful. The blind man replied, O king, why harbor such thoughts after years of marriage? What prompts these questions? Undeterred, the king insisted, threatening the death penalty if the blind man refused to answer. Faced with the ultimatum, the blind man acquiesced, saying, Very well, O king, I shall address your query. However, you must do me a favor. The king inquired, What must I do? The blind man proposed, You must leave your wife alone with me in a room. Initially angered, the king, after deliberation, agreed to the condition and instructed his commander to carry out the arrangement, leaving the blind man alone with the queen in a room. In that moment, the blind man informs the queen, I desire to touch you. Upon hearing this, the queen becomes infuriated and proceeds to mercilessly beat the blind man, alternating between using her hands, feet, and all her strength. Eventually, the blind man somehow escapes with his life and approaches the king. Addressing the king, he states, O king, your wife is unfaithful. This revelation sparks anger in the king, prompting him to draw his sword and confront his wife. He sternly tells her, Queen, today I will pose a question and you must answer truthfully. Any falsehood will result in immediate consequences. He inquires, Tell me, are you faithful or not? In response, the queen declares, O king, you may as well kill me, for I am not faithful. The king is relieved as the blind man's assertions prove true. Filled with joy, the king seeks out the blind man and questions. How did you discern my wife's unfaithfulness? The blind man explains, O king, it's simple. When I expressed my desire to touch her, she became so enraged that she resorted to beating me. A faithful woman wouldn't touch another man. If she had declined, it would have sufficed, but she chose to beat me, touching my entire body in the process. How can such a woman be faithful? Impressed, the king acknowledges the wisdom and says, You are astute, let's proceed. He proposes, Answer one more question correctly, and I will release you. The king queries, Tell me if I am truly my father's son or someone else's. The blind man suggests, O king, this matter is irrelevant. Regardless of your parentage, you are the ruler of this state. Let this question go. However, the king persists, insisting on an exact answer. The blind man agrees with the condition that the king won't get angry. After the king promises, the blind man reveals, you are indeed your father's son, but you are also under the shadow of a miserly merchant. Delighted, the king rushes to his mother, seeking confirmation about his parentage. He implores, mother, tell me the truth. Am I truly my father's son or someone else's? I am willing to sacrifice my life for the truth. The king's mother remarks, my son, you are undeniably your father's offspring, but you also bear the influence of a miserly merchant. While scrutinizing myself in the mirror after bathing, I noticed the reflection of a miserly merchant upon you. Elated by this revelation, the king promptly returns to the blind man, inquiring, how did you discern the presence of a miserly merchant's shadow on me? The blind man responds, O king, You've posed numerous questions, and I've provided accurate answers to each. Were you any other monarch? I would have been rewarded generously by now. However, you've not bestowed a single penny upon me. From this, I deduced your inclination toward frugality. 
Amused, the king laughs and declares, Ask for whatever you desire, I shall grant it. But tell me, how do you possess the ability to distinguish right from wrong? How do you offer such precise responses? The blind man explains, O king, I am inherently blind. Had I sight, I could easily comprehend the thoughts of others. The mind communicates in its own language, manifested through a person's actions. By observing one's eyes, lips, movements and activities, one can discern their mental state. Being blind, I rely on actions to perceive. If I seek knowledge, I assign a task to another person, observing their actions to understand their thoughts. In response, the king asks, does that mean I can also fathom someone's thoughts? The blind man asserts, certainly you too can grasp anyone's thoughts. However, you must first cultivate yourself and focus your mind. By aligning your mind with the present, you can understand others' thoughts as they are also thinking in the present. To achieve this, you must concentrate your mind and bring it into the present. The blind man then proceeds to share three simple methods with the king, emphasizing the importance of focusing the mind on the present. He continues, O king, I will now reveal the three ways for you to easily understand anyone's thoughts. The blind man advises the king, the first method is to observe the eyes. When conversing with someone, direct your attention to their eyes as they convey unspoken messages. By interpreting signals in a person's eyes, such as their gaze and direction, you can discern their thoughts and intentions. Although I lack eyes, I acquired this skill from Gautama Buddha, my revered teacher. If you wish to understand others, pay attention to their eyes, observing their movements and expressions. He elaborates on the significance of eye contact and explains how certain eye movements, eyebrow gestures, pupil size and eye color can provide insights into a person's emotions, intentions and well-being. I recall an occasion when I encountered a weary traveler. As we conversed, his gaze constantly roamed, avoiding direct eye contact with me, indicating his unease and a desire to depart swiftly. I suspected he harbored a concealed agenda. Despite his reluctance to engage in conversation, I persisted with additional inquiries, ultimately discovering his undisclosed plan. Similarly, various facial expressions serve as windows into a person's thoughts. Facial behaviors can manifest diverse emotions, allowing us to discern whether someone is experiencing disappointment, profound sadness, or immense joy. Observing facial expressions provides insights into their internal state, unveiling a range of emotions. Oh, sovereign, the countenance acts as a canvas reflecting individuals' inner sentiments, even in their silence. To gain a deeper understanding of people, one must attune themselves to these unspoken cues. A downturned mouth, forming a slight frown, typically signifies unhappiness, displeasure, or loss. Further cues can be gleaned from the eyes and overall body language, conveying a sense of melancholy. Conversely, a genuine, expansive smile, elevating both eyes and cheeks, signifies happiness, amiability, and benevolence. The eyes play a pivotal role, their small and gleaming appearance confirming the authenticity of the smile. Examine the furrowed space between a person's eyebrows, indicative of deep contemplation, confusion, or an attempt to grasp something intricate or novel. The positioning of the mouth also conveys valuable information. A closed and tense mouth may denote disagreement, displeasure, or a reluctance to engage in conversation. Conversely, an open and relaxed mouth signifies receptiveness, ease, and a willingness to communicate. As you become more adept at recognizing and comprehending these facial cues, you'll gain the ability to discern people's thoughts and emotions, whether they express them verbally or remain silent. 
facial expressions serve as a window to their inner feelings, revealing the contents of their hearts. Thus, regardless of whether someone articulates their thoughts, you can grasp the full spectrum of their emotions simply by observing their face. Allow me to share an anecdote. Once I encountered a despondent individual seeking assistance, yet their demeanor suggested indifference. However, a subtle line on their forehead betrayed an underlying issue. When I prompted them to share their concerns, they did so, finding solace in the process, and I was able to offer support. A genuine smile not only lights up the eyes, but also signifies joy and kindness. Conversely, a furrowed brow indicates worry or confusion, while raised eyebrows denote surprise or curiosity. Facial expressions serve as a reliable indicator of one's emotions. Building on this, the person informs the king of a third method, stating, O king, there exists a third language, the language of gestures and body language. To decipher a person's thoughts, we must comprehend the nuances of hand movements and body language. During verbal communication, you may have observed individuals gesticulating and making gestures. Beyond words, their body language significantly contributes to conveying their thoughts. O King, the body and hands can communicate a wealth of information without uttering a single word, a clandestine form of communication where subtle actions reveal desires and emotions. Consider the swift tapping of fingers during conversation, which may indicate boredom, impatience, or a desire to conclude the discussion promptly. Recalling an encounter with someone attempting to sell me something, I recognized his nervousness through a specific gesture. Capitalizing on this insight, I negotiated a better price, leaving him surprised. Furthermore, crossed arms can signal disapproval or disagreement, acting as a barrier to shield thoughts and feelings. Recognizing this gesture allows for a more considerate and accommodating approach, fostering comfort and openness in communication. When someone inclines forward, it signifies their interest in you or what you're saying. Their attentive listening indicates a genuine desire to hear more, demonstrating a willingness to listen, learn and comprehend your words. I once encountered a wise teacher who embodied this behavior. Despite his calm demeanor, he leaned in with interest, conveying a curiosity to delve deeper into the topic. People who frequently touch their face during a conversation can offer insights into their thoughts. This gesture often suggests worry, deep contemplation, or the emergence of a significant idea. These subtle touches provide a window into their mind and heart. To adeptly interpret others through their body language and gestures, one must exercise patience, keen observation, and an appreciation for the unspoken. These nuanced, yet crucial signals akin to a silent book unveil the emotions and thoughts concealed within, fostering a deeper connection. By paying attention to these three methods and interpreting them accurately, we can swiftly grasp a person's mental state, the level of attention they dedicate to our words, and the inner workings of their mind. However, to achieve this understanding, one must first center their own mind, be present in the moment, and refrain from dwelling on past events or future plans. Only then can one observe and comprehend these actions, gaining insight into the person's mind. Otherwise, preoccupation with the past or future impedes the ability to discern body language and grasp the thoughts at play. You may have encountered numerous revered saints and enlightened individuals who gaze at you with tranquility, discerning the workings of your mind and the lessons you seek from them. The primary reason for their insight is their ability to read and understand others derived from a focused and peaceful mind. This focused state allows them to effortlessly comprehend your thoughts 
If you discovered this information to be useful, kindly give us a thumbs up to assist us in reaching a broader audience interested in ancient wisdom. If you're a newcomer, consider subscribing and activating the notification bell for additional lessons on ancient wisdom. We appreciate your viewership and we look forward to connecting with you in our upcoming video. To explore more content, select one of the videos displayed on your screen.